And I want to ask you a bunch of questions. And I want to have them answered immediately. Now listen to me very carefully. It doesn't. You're listening here live on the coolest of the cool, the cool, cool show. Yeah, that's right. You're listening here. The coolest show around. We rocking it from coast to coast, north to south, and yes, maybe even in Antarctica. And if you're in Antarctica, you still haven't told us whether or not you're listening to the show. Yes, intergalactic crazy coolness. That is what this show is all about. Along with conspiracy theories. So, if you're a flat earther, a globe believer, a science person, a non science person, hell, I don't care. Just come relax and listen to some cool, wacky, crazy stuff here on this cool to the cool, the coolie cool show. Oh yeah, if you haven't done so already, be sure to follow and like and subscribe to our other social media platforms. You can follow me on my TikTok and YouTube channel, both labeled The Cooly Cool Show. You can also follow me on my Twitter account at Cooly Cool 24 You can also follow me on my Instagram page at Brent underscore the show. And just to let you know, you can also listen to this podcast. It's being brought to you by Spreaker.com. Also, you can listen to iHeartRadio, Google Podcast, and Spotify. Getting started in just a couple of seconds. Cosmos. 
folks tuning in to listen to the coolest of the cool, the cool, cool show. Now, without further ado, I'm going to bring you the coolest talk personality along the entire observable universe. Your host, Red. Yeah, yeah. Woo! Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Woo! Yes. You're listening here live on the coolest of the cool, the coolie cool show with your host Brett kicking it here on this Thursday night. So, if you haven't done so already, make sure you like and subscribe to my other social media platforms. See. Ooh, where do we begin? Where do we begin? Where did we begin? Again, ladies and gentlemen, and I'd like to say thank you to all my listeners out there, all two of you, the two listeners I have, you guys are amazing, you guys are what makes this amazing to do, so, we're going to leave off where we left off last night, and if you haven't caught the previous podcast of mine, you can go to YouTube, my YouTube channel, which is coolly cool. And just type it in there. Be sure to like and be sure to follow and subscribe there. But we're leaving off from last night, which is Who's Selling Wolf Tickets? Part 2. Oh, yes. Part 2. So... Basically, we talked about a lot of things yesterday. Um, in today's news, there's a lot of crazy nonsense, malarkiness going on. We talk about a lot of, uh, you know, this past week has been a lot about uh, balloons. Um, I touched on a little bit about alien abductions and stories of that nature. Um, <laughs> talked a little bit about America and China and Russia, how people are saying impending conflicts are soon to be headed to the world's front doorstep with the world powers looking to align the illustrial stars and to making a hell of a conflict where we're on the brink of almost World War Three. But, you know, I've, I've told people don't buy into the wolf tickets. Who's selling the wolf tickets? I gave an explanation of what wolf tickets mean and imply. See, for many of you those that don't understand what the term is selling wolf tickets, I'm going to let you know as far as what the encyclopedia means. Well, actually, I don't think the encyclopedia is around anymore during my time. The encyclopedia was the Google googly google of its time but in retrospect the encyclopedia was a book that you actually had to go to the library they had so many volumes and you just pick out and you looked and sipped read through where you wanted to find information about certain things that go on you know but google has taken completely over and they will take over so um if you look at how that is, it's pretty much what it is. All information has been now placed in the vast array of the internet. So, selling wolf tickets to make threats or boost, especially if empty and or made to intimidate someone. That's not the type of wolf tickets I'm talking about. I'm talking about, oh man, they selling wolf tickets. Man, they're full of shit. Making shit up. Lying to your ass. Trying to see if you're going to go ahead and make that jump so that they can freaking either get paid or they can get you 
to sway with them. And unfortunately, in today's time, you have too many people selling wolf tickets all around the whole board, the whole spectrum, the whole nine yards, all right, the whole nine yards, literally. You have people on a lot of the other social media platforms doing it for a particular reason, i.e. to make money or to gain notoriety. And I know many people say, well, aren't you doing the same thing, man, sitting here talking about you being the coolest, the coolest, the coolest, the coolest show, man? Uh, you're sitting there trying to influence people. No. What I am doing is bringing to you the realest of the real talk radio around, the realest podcast, making you understand that each and every one of you has great common sense. You guys have great critical thinking skills. But don't buy into the bullshit, don't buy into the hype, and I've came up with that word if you've been following my podcast, bullshittery. Alright? Don't buy into the bullshittery stuff that is out there in the cosmos, along the world. Alright? Because apparently, bullshit is starting to run rampant. And it will run rampant if you allow it to run rampant. But, in the same sense... I'm going to bring to you guys common sense to things. I talk about it all the time. When people start talking about aliens and things of that nature, I'm going to bring it to you. People talk about, oh, we went to space. But all they did is go into a high altitude plane or a capsule, capsule, but never actually got out of the mother freaking outer, got into outer space. Literally. So, you got to kind of understand how that is being played into a lot of things. So, if you don't know, now you know. So, um, it, well, like I said, you're here on the coolest of the cool, the coolie cool show. We're going to break down. And, matter of fact, we're going to start off with one. And, you know what? It is so freaking crazy that I actually happened to, I was watching a video. And as I was watching a video, um, the video that I was watching, it had William Shatner. And William Shatner, if you don't know him, William Shatner was on the, a freaking, he was one of the main characters on Star Trek. He was one of the main characters on Star Trek. And as he was the one of the main uh, characters on Star Trek, you know, it's this futuristic thing. They were traveling in space and, you know, all the type of thing. Yeah. So, I was watching this video. He apparently was in a, uh, a capsule, flight capsule, that went into um, supposed outer space where they got the fuel and floated around in zero-G gravity. And as they did, um, they're up there. And they're like, oh, I'm in space. And the one guy who was kind of, uh, he was criticizing about it because he was just looking at it. He's like, there's no way in hell. His, him, William Shatner, up there in this freaking space. There's no no way, no way, no how. But he was up there with like four of the people because apparently they think capsule would only take five people. And it's attached and they come first, thrust, lands down. And then the capsule part allows them to float. And it's unmanned and pilot, whatever. And Parachutes landed and boom hit the gun. And the narrator, he had me rolling and he had me laughing. And when I'm talking, I was rolling and I was laughing because the fact that he was like, Isn't William Shatner like in his 70s or 80s? And he was like getting out like it was just like Sunday dinner. He was ready to go eat Sunday dinner, moving quick and fast and everything. But in hindsight, it was like, the way that damn craft hit down, it was probably, he probably needed about four other people to help get him out of the space capsule. Just saying. And I was kind of looking, I was like, yeah, and then on top of that, once again, William Shatter in the space capsule, flying out there. And no spacesuit. He had a jumpsuit. No, like, you know, spacesuit, the astronauts and Apollo went up, none of that, none of that shit. None of those spacesuits that they had for the astronauts, you know, remotely doing any type of, you know, the space shuttle program when it was back then. No, no, just, they had them jumpsuits. Yeah, jumpsuits. 
But they're saying, oh, I want the space. This is what I've said before. Have a common sense. Look at the little tiny details in the certain stuff that doesn't make much sense. I said to you beforehand, I said, hey. It's like, hi, hi, hi. Told you about um, how you don't catch it. It's, it's going to be weird, you know. I mean, even the Red Bull guy who did the parachute jump from the little capsule that he went out there in the helium balloon that took him up to the capsule, he jumped off, and he had a whole space suit on and everything. And he jumps down and comes down to Earth with this whole space suit, helmet and all. But apparently, these su supposed space flights or whatever, they're going up there to not even, they're just getting zero-G gravity feel. And they're just wearing jumpsuits. Just like the billionaire, you know, Richard Bronson. He goes, flies out there, and his thing, he's like, oh, I'm in space now. He's, and they're getting zero, zero G gravity. And they're just, you know, floating around. And for a couple minutes, about 12, 12, 10, 12 minutes, just out there floating. And then they come back in. And they're like, oh, we're in space. No, you're not in space. If you were in space, you'd be the same way as what those guys are doing out there in the International Space Station. All those guys that went to the moon. Okay? Literally. But, once again, like I said, the title of this, this episode and the episode before, who's selling wolf tickets? Well, I'll tell you right now, these wolf tickets that they're selling is high-priced wolf tickets. Because these wolf tickets are at least... Last time I looked, when they were trying to talk people to get go to the, do these kind of commercial space flights, they're about two hundred fifty thousand dollars for one seat. And yes, that I don't even know if that's a round trip. It apparently, is it gets round trip. But if you go out to space and some shit happens, or so called space, the top layer of the atmosphere, some shit happens, that was a one way fucking ticket. So. You know, there's a lot of fucking nonsense. I mean, and surprisingly, a, a couple YouTubers on YouTube did the exact same thing. Had so many followers. And what are they doing? Selling wolf tickets so that people can get paid. And as I told people before, it's always a money issue. It's forever will be a money issue. Don't be fooled, ladies and gentlemen. Truth is out there, but you have to be able to look and find out and see where the truth is. You know, it it re you really have to sometimes look at things and not just be clouded by how something seemed. Like for many people, I mean, let's put it this way: if you go to a fancy restaurant, you know, you're taking your lady, taking the guy, you guys are going out to your fancy restaurant, you're going to sit down there, you know, have a good meal with your lady, and you're like, yeah, I'm taking you somewhere special. Taking you to the finest restaurant, the finest restaurant, steakhouse, whatever. So you take your lady out. You order stuff that's imm immaculately, imm immaculately, I, I can't talk today, uh, but taking her out, having a wonderful dinner, you get the food, it's prepared, it looks beautiful. You get like, let's say, a certain type of meal. doesn't have much portions of food on it, but it's presented in a way to where it's like, holy shit, I got some that's type of chicken with whatever, and the shit look good. So it's just looking really good. You're like, man, god damn, this is, this, is a good, this is a good meal. You're eating it, and then you find it, and it's all going, and then you get the fucking bill. For your meal alone, cost two hundred some bucks for like three pieces of chicken breast and maybe some smidgen of vegetables or something, and maybe some uh, a starch to go with it, which would be like some mashed potatoes finely cooked, which you could have probably done yourself. And then they put some kind of puree, in it, you know, whatever the hell kind of puree they decided to go with your meal. And but it cost like two hundred some bucks, but it was presented very well. Might I add? Very well. Now, would you say that you got sold wolf tickets? Considering the fact that it looks like some fucking chicken, some veggies, and some starch. And when I say starch, fuck it. Like I said, we've said mashed potatoes. You want to say macaroni and cheese? I don't give a damn. But that's pretty much what it is. You could go to another place. Matter of fact, you can go to your own goddamn kitchen. 
cook up the same shit. Might not look as fine. You might probably burn the chicken just a little bit. Mashed potatoes might be a little kind of lumpy. Maybe a little bit grainy. You fuck with it. It's the same shit. But yeah, you go to a nice fancy restaurant because you, you want top quality. You want to be treated like a goddamn rock star. Well, guess what? You're going to pay rock star fucking money for your meal for the same shit. So, wolf tickets. Everybody's selling wolf tickets. I think that's a dog, right? Or some shit like that. But literally, same shit. Think about it. Think about it. Come on. Gotta be able to think. Common sense, ladies and gentlemen. Common sense. Aaron, it's, it's true. It may, if this is the first time you're hearing my podcast and you're kind of saying, what in the hell is he talking about? I'm talking about common sense, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking about how shit can be twisted, shit can be molded to fit an agenda for others. All right? You know, it, it always works this way. Like, for instance, uh, when Russia was getting ready to invade Ukraine, there was so much talk about the United States and the United States. And the United States was involved in the conflict. It's not involved. The United States is like trying to say, "Hey, yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna attack you." And then other other countries, especially Africa, one 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 news network was like, "The United States is predicting war." Blah, blah, blah. They're fueling animosity. They're fueling predictions. Blah blah blah. They're telling the blah, blah blah blah. And I, my podcast, was saying, "Look, there's going to be a conflict. Russia's not going to stagger their troops across the thing and says, yeah, we're doing an exercise.' Really? And they like, and people come saying, "Oh, you're acting like the United States." Like, no, I'm telling you, as a common sense, you don't do that shit. Unless you're planning to do some type of uh, invasion. And so what happened? Russia invaded Ukraine. Russia invaded Ukraine, obviously, to fulfill their own dream of bringing back together the, you know, Slavic countries over there, back together, having them, you know, unified or whatever, back with Russia. Just like, you know, uh, North Korea and them are always talking about reunification, reunification, you know. And they talk about reunification in North Korea, talking about taking over South Korea to reunify the Koreas. No, that's not reunification. That's me taking over another country and then saying, yeah, we're all together, not ruling motherfuckers. And you know, the people in South Korea don't even think like that. They're not talking about no damn reunification. They're like, man, we having fun. We partying over here. We look over y'all. Y'all look too damn fucking serious. You know, I mean, apparently I looked in the news today. You know, um, North Korea just did like some type of parade where they were. They normally do a test of showing their might on their uh, ICBM uh, rockets. You know, launching out into uh, space. Well, not space, but launching, you know, trying to show, yeah, we win it and all this other stuff. And, you know, they bring in the hype machine and everything. I mean, it's really good, but, you know, these footages and images get leaked out. So you have to assume that North Korea wants the rest of the world to see their strength and their might because. One, they're not impressing their own country people because their country people are probably fed this and brainwashed about it over and over every day. So, obviously, the footage has to get out to the other world governments so that way, you know, that they can show, look, look, we we doing big. Yes, right, that's right. We, we, we doing it big. Look, look, look at the prey. Look at all these, all these military people for it. Yeah, we, yeah, 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 we, we doing big. Okay, cool. Got you, bro. You got a good army. It's big size. You know, you got weapons. You, you, you know, you're on point. You take care of your business. Got you. You know, flexing the mic. You know, it's all a show. It's a display. Because if you, I mean, think about it. The United States had, okay, when was the last time the United States didn't have a whole marching parade of, you know, our tanks, and, you know, our planes 
going down, you know, street, and we all, you know, marching, do, 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 you know, there's no sign of that. No one's doing that. No one cares to do that. Matter of fact, I don't think we have the time for it. Well, let's, we don't give a damn about doing that. But, you know, you got other countries that, for some odd reason, got to flex they might to try to intimidate the rest of the world. Because they, they're, they're insecure. That's, that's what it is, right? It's, an, it's insecureness. It's insecureness. You know, it's like that, uh, that commercial. You're like, uh, you know, Snickers bar. So that way they can eat the candy, feel a little bit better about themselves, come back down to the reality. So some of these countries need, they need to go to a candy bar to kind of put them back, bring them back and say, okay, I'm back in the game. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not overhyping, not too crazy, but I'm back in the game. I'm feeling better about myself, feeling good. You know, but, you know, too many times, uh, you know, things get out of hand. People start, you know, well, more or less countries start flexing too hard, then it's at a point in time where you're like, look, we don't care. Bro, chill out with all this nonsense. You know, this whole week has been fueled with the Chinese uh, surveillance, spy balloon, whatever, whatever you want to call this time. Bozo the Clowns, Thought Balloon, I don't fucking know. They're still talking about this. So much up in the arms about this fucking balloon. I mean, yeah, I did a podcast about it because I wanted the people to know about that. Hey, for the fact that, like, well, this blood apparently has been crawling across the United States and it's happened more than once before, but we just weren't ever told about it. They're testing their thing. Look, as I said before and I said last night, the United States is completely paranoid and we've always have been paranoid. And that's what we der- derive ourselves on is being paranoid because. We worry about what everybody else is doing because it affects what we do. We are a business. All right? Here in the United States, we are a business. Plain and simple. You know? We are a business to make money. That's what we do. That's the America. That's why other countries love us because we're in the business of making money. So, with all these other countries, something that happened in the United States, those other countries are losing out on money. They're losing business. Like, for instance, let's, let's put this in perspective. Like, obviously, they're trying to create some tension because obviously the media loves to stir up shit. You know, they say fake news is big business. So, for instance, uh, China, you know, like in the news, it's been a turmoil with China. China's doing this, China's doing that. We trade. Goods and stuff with China. China does the same shit with us. If you think that the world doesn't work together, you are sadly mistaken. Trust me on that. If you think the world does not work together, we all fucking do. Every country, no matter how it may seem or how it's depicted, work together in some shape, way, or fashion. Meaning, they're doing something in order to try to, hey, I can help you. You can help me. You know what I'm saying? I got you. You got me. And then when a conflict ends up happening where there seems to be an escalation of military force or forces like to happen, that is because situation has been not at a standstill. More or less because of the situation where it's like, look, I'm going to slap you in the mouth. Because I'm tired of you talking shit. But overall, at the end of this, I'm going to help you out. You know, you help me out. You know what I'm saying? I got you. But we might have to chin check each other. Well, I'm going to chin check you to make you realize I have to fuck back down. But all the world's governments, all the world's powers, everybody fucking works together. There's no true soul enemy. Okay? There's no saying that, oh, I'm not working with you because you're. That hasn't happened since like World War II. But everybody pretty much works together. But they make it seem as though everybody hates each other. No. Everybody just has different opinions, different ideas. Like, for instance, think about this. For the longest time, and can still to this day, the United States and Cuba are, are not friends. We're, we're, it's, they're narrow, close to our borders, and so are we to them. We 
still have a base at Guantanamo Bay. Don't believe anything that says, oh, yeah, we took all our stuff out of Guantanamo Bay. No longer have the base. You can believe that nonsense if you want to. All right? You can believe that shit if you want to. Still got a base down there, a small territory in Cuba. So, like, we're not friends on paper, but behind closed doors, we're like, look, bro, pipe that shit the fuck down, right? You fucking trying to embarrass me. I'm not going to help you. If I got to slap you, I'm going to slap you. All right? That's, this is how this shit works. Like, honestly. And that's what I said. Look at this from a common perspective. It doesn't benefit. Oh, it's all, we're all going to have a fucking big ass war. No, it doesn't work out for any party on either side. It does not. Because guess what happens? Everybody loses out. Everybody. And we're talking about money wise. Freaking governments collapse, governments fall, and shit dwindles the fuck down. Trust me, people are like, well, China's got the biggest fucking na- biggest fucking navy now. Well, that's because they have a huge population. So they had to accommodate for the amount of people that they force into the military. And there's nothing wrong with serving the military. I think it's actually good for some of these countries where they have it where hey your obligation, two years in the military service, that's a good thing. I mean, it's been handed down for, you know, for time as we know it. You know, here in America, we're afforded the opportunity to whether if you want to serve, you don't have to serve. If you do serve, you do serve. You know, to volunteer. Because, and I think that makes Hallmark, it was like, you know what? We're getting volunteers, people that are willing to commit themselves to the better good for their own country here in the United States. I think it's awesome. I think it's terrific, to be honest. But looking at how the world is placed and how the world deals with shit, come on, man. You guys, look, anybody out there that's listened to my podcast, I'm not bullshitting you when it comes to this. I'm being straight up for real. There's tons of wolf tickets, like I said. And don't, and trust me, like that TikTok algorithm, trust me, man, this is bullshit like hell. Some of y'all probably have TikTok and you have mixed good content, but trust me, because you're not in the algorithm, that people aren't going to see your shit and you'll get shadow banned. Just like certain other social media things, they shadow ban people all the time. You know, I saw a video where it was a Congress lady, or whatever, senator, she was going off on like Twitter executives or something like that for shadow banning her, and she says, this has happened to me, this has happened to many, countless other Americans that are being shadow banned by your company because they're voicing their opinions. Look, we know that's a shadow ban. Trust me. It happens all the time. Because they don't want certain information to get out there. They don't want people to be able to understand certain things. They don't want people to be able to critically think, to be able to understand that it's not hard to deceive people. Think about this as a magician that is doing a performance in front of people, doing street magic in front of people. And the magician can make a coin, something, a pen, a deck of cards disappear with you standing right there and you'd be like, where the hell did it go? Reason why is because they do misdirection. There's always a type of misdirection. They're deceiving you. Like, it's crazy, crazy not to be able to understand how certain things work around this whole around the world. It just, it just boggles the mind out of me. You know, I, I mean, <laughs> the world we live in today, ladies and gentlemen, is full of nothing but misdirection. And don't get me started with the fact that Things happened back in the old days, way back, like, you know, when <laughs> civilizations were first started and people trying to influence and things of that nature. Don't get me started on that. Because, as I said before in my podcast, it's like a lot of these people back in the day, they couldn't do what they're very illiterate. So, people who were able to try to fool people, influence people, were those who were actually educated back then to get to people. And then, after this, when they teach their teaching to other people who did not know, next thing you know what ended up happening is people that were uneducated now become educated in the things that this one person decided to influence on this person, and they take it as a form of belief. So, I just want to leave it there because guess what? If I get on Twitter, 
And I'm just going to keep going on it. I'm just going to see how corrupt things are. You know, it, it really is. I mean, all mankind, all man, human species, is corrupt in some fucking shape or way or form. And then I remember I was reading something and it was like talking about, uh, I know I might be getting up a little bit topic, but they were talking about uh, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, you know, and God had put them there. And, you know, and God said, hey, you can have anything you want, but do not eat the fruit from the forbidden tree. And they talk about the apple, right? Let's talk about the apple. But then what ended up happening? The serpent, the snake, said, hey, have this apple. Eve ate it. She said, man, that tastes pretty good. She gave some to Adam. Adam ate it. said, it tastes pretty good. And then the next thing God found out, God kicked him out of the, um, the Eden. And then they had to defend themselves. Now, one catch is that is that um, if you believe in God, because I believe in God, and I hope other people do believe in God, um, and they said, oh, well, this is what, you know, the sin. Well, I don't think people say, well, they sin, but then people say, well, God was testing them to do the right thing. But then God is all the way. God knows everything. So I don't think God was testing them. God gave them free will to make their own decision. And to follow that decision, God puts it in place there. So if God didn't want them to have free will to free things to do what they felt was right or to try something, God would never have put in the forbidden fruit, that tree, in the Garden of Eden. Never would have. But people say, well, he was testing. No. God did it on purpose because he wanted the people to be able to make a choice of their own. He wanted them to be able to think. wanted them to be able to have free will. That's, I mean, that goes kind of with somewhat of certain things. Now, like I said, I got off track with what the hell I was really talking about. But I was I was watching some reading something on that. And I was, it's just very fascinating because I thought it's very true. It's like, God is all knowing. God loves her. But at the same time, don't have to think like, oh, all we're all sinners. It's not the fact that they sin. It's the fact that God gave them a choice. If he didn't want that tree in there, God would have put it there. But God left it up to them to make a choice on what they wanted to do. And it wasn't to say your choice is bad, your choice is wrong. It's your choice to make, you know. But enough of that. I don't want to get into that because then I might get, you know, a couple of, uh, you know, people who are high into religion. They might start commenting and talking about this, and I don't feel as like, though I want to be sure enough about that. Cause I'm not. I'm not. You know, I mean, sure, let's, 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 go, let's go on the aliens now. We're going to go on aliens, aliens bits. Anybody has any good stories about aliens abductions? Anybody get an alien? You know, anything? Any, anyone, 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 anyone? I haven't heard much. I told you before, just as we're getting close towards the end of the uh, my uh, episode last night, I was talking about as far as aliens. Um, we haven't heard much about alien invasions, anything of aliens, content, anything like that. And the reason why is because we're not going to hear anything about it. Um, and the thing is because it's not the popular topic right now. There's nothing really to invest in it, you know. I mean, it was like I said, it was hot and heavy for a period of time where people were trying to do oh, the government's going to disclose about the aliens. Oh, no. And they did. They just said some generic shit. And now you notice it's kind of gone to the wayside. No one's concerned about it. And it's like, oh, okay. Is there really aliens out there? Who the hell knows? No one knows. I mean, people will steady on talking about. There's a lot of space out there. We believe in aliens. Um, there are aliens. There are aliens out there, and they're mostly an advanced, you know, intelligent species. You know, my biggest pet peeve. I've said it before. I'm not gonna say it again. Just follow and listen to my other podcast. You'll know. My thing is, I got a problem with aliens and straight up bias. That's what I got a problem with. I'm like, that's how I gotta take on that. You know, but like I said, if you want to check my other podcast, you can check my other podcast, my previous ones. I talk a little bit extensively in detail on why I think this. And matter of fact, as far as the alien abductions, I had 
uh, did a podcast about one particular uh, lady who had an encounter with aliens, and they had abducted her and took her up to the mothership. And, you know, when they, I guess, came into her home when her husband was in a deep sleep, and she woke to find these little aliens, bald head, big eyes, whatever. Um, the alien told her to shut up. So apparently the alien is able to tell people to shut up and know the meaning behind shut up. Yeah. Like I said, you know, and, and it goes around to what I said. It, there's always some underlining bullshit to people's agenda. Like, I don't know what this lady's whole agenda was behind. Oh, I know the aliens exist. And then you have other people say, oh, yeah, we believe her. You know, like, okay, who's 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 in it? You know, who who's in it? Is everybody in it? You know, is everybody getting a piece of this pie? Is everybody getting a slice of the pie? And how much is this slice of the pie? And, you know, and, you know we're talking about how much is this slice are they getting out of the pie? So how much originally is the whole pie? You know, because if a slice is pretty big, then what's the grand over, you know, the whole shebang for the pie? You know, I said it's, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you like I said, if I, I'm, I'm going to do another podcast about my alien stuff, I got to find, dig up some more stuff, dig up some more stories because a lot of stuff, these alien abductions and people seeing aliens, it, it gets intense with these people in these fucking alien abductions. It's, it's, it's weird. It's real. It's in fucking insane. You know, and people are saying, well, the one way to bring the whole world together is have a massive alien invasion. And with people coming together to, uh, you know, clear out the problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. It always has to happen that way, right? Whatever. <laughs> you know, if that's always the whole big plan, that, like I said, why are aliens flying around? And flying saucers, so they claim, but they using bright ass spotlights to see through, you know, Earth's terrain. If they're supposed to be an advanced species, then why in the hell are they using fucking big ass spotlights to navigate their way in daytime and nighttime? You would think they would have what we would have here, which is night vision fucking goggles and shit. But hey, I'm just being fucking common sense with it, right? Don't mind me with my common sense mentality. So, like I said, I'm only bringing it to you to the stuff that's real. Let you know. So, it's, oh. Well, well, well that means we didn't come to another, uh, Close to a wonderful episode here on the coolest of the cool, the coolie cool show. You know, the topic we have who's selling wolf tickets? I'm telling you right now, if you don't know by now, there's a whole bunch of people selling wolf tickets. It's just how much you want to pay for them wolf tickets. And are you really going to believe in them wolf tickets? Hell, if you pay so much, you might have a front row seat to them tickets. So, whatever you plan on going to, just see. Yeah. Just don't be fooled and be looking stupid. But just like uh, in the Matrix, the more we said, you can wake up and believe whatever you want to believe. And frankly, for Quubba, y'all, y'all are believing the bullshit. So it is what it is. But I'm just here to expand. So, if you haven't done so already, be sure to follow and like, and follow me on my other social media platforms. You can follow me on my YouTube channel and TikTok channel, Level the Coolie Cool Show. You can also follow me on my Twitter account at Coolie Cool Twenty Four Twelve. You can also follow me on my Instagram page at Brent underscore the Champ. And be sure if you missed any episodes here, follow and like and subscribe on the other social media platforms at iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker dot com, yeah, baby, uh, Google Podcast. So you're right here live on the Cools of the Cool. A coolie cool show. Your host, Brent. Take care. Bye.